Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And a couple of recruiting updates. Uh, we had we did have a bye week, so we had to sim uh, a couple weeks. So here we go, man. We are at this point of the season where people are starting to commit to other schools. So Brandon Martinez, we miss out on him. Number one middle linebacker. He commits to Penn State. Griffin Reedy com uh, commits to South Carolina. So our recruiting shift uh, our recruiting board shifts to John Cooper, the top cornerback. He's an athlete, but he's going to be a cornerback. I think there's no doubt about it. 88 man, man coverage, 85 zone, and Travis Novak. And these guys are pretty much uh, first and second on our radar because if you look below him, Adam Nunez, he, we're in a pretty good position with him. He's a 78 overall outside linebacker. We're going to use the hell out of him because he's got some overall uh good pass rushing a good combination of tackling and block shedding hit power i mean he's just an all-around guy i can't wait uh, i hope he commits to our school but we're, we got a pretty good lead with him sean washington we're first on his list as well patrick toshi uh we're first on his and Raymond mcgraw is another guy we do want and i hope we get him because we do need that middle linebacker to be solidified so after we just lost uh, Martinez we really need to get in a solid middle linebacker Amy McGraw looks like he fits that build so looking at the, the last couple of weeks so we beat Houston but wait until you see this jump we made in the national polls we are officially at number two in the nation and let's just look at the top 25 schools because we made quite the jump and Look who's number one. North Carolina is number one in the nation. And this is something that I would never thought that would happen. But look at Surratt. I mean, he is just destroying right now. 14 touchdowns, two interceptions. He's even their leading rusher last game. Look at that. He had 17 carries, 106 yards, four total touchdowns, 300 yards through the air. So look at the undefeated teams left. Ohio State's undefeated. And so is UCLA. Alabama actually lost. Uh, let's see who they lost to. So they lost their first game to Georgia. So they're probably going to be in the thick of things at the end. But early on, Georgia upset them. But then Georgia lost to TAMU. So there's a bunch of uh, one-loss teams in the country right now. And if we keep going down the line, look at our other Big 12 foe on the other side of the uh, conference. Iowa State's 5-1, and one, and they lost to West Virginia. So... It's going to be a tight race to see who can get into the conference championship because all of our teams in this conference are pretty close right now. If you look at this, uh, Oklahoma State's 5-1. and one. They're 2-1 and one in the conference. We're playing them this week, actually. And on the other side of the conference, we're looking at Iowa State, who's on top of their division, 2-1 and one, uh, in conference. Remember, uh, they have a pretty good quarterback. Look at Nolan, 21 touchdowns, 3 interceptions. That's the reason they're probably doing as well as they are right now. Boise State's 5-2, and 2-2 two, two and two on their side. And Texas pretty much fell off. I don't even know how they're still ranked. They have four losses, 24 in the nation. But uh, Houston looks like they fell off quite a bit. And Iowa State, like I said, is there. Uh, let's just look at the other conferences. So Ohio State is 3-0 and on top of the Big Ten. Uh, looks like Northwestern is right behind them. But overall, Minnesota is ranked 25th in the nation. They're 6-1, and one, and Michigan is 6-1 and one right here. Uh, no real surprises. Oh, look at Wisconsin. They are 1-5. I mean, they are just having such a horrible year. Let's move over, uh, see what the Pac-12 is looking like. So UCLA is 7-0. and oh. uh, USC is 6-1. and one. No surprise that they're the two teams on top, along with Stanford, right behind them, 5-1 and one in conference. They're 5-2 and two overall. And then Arizona State's 10th in the nation. So let's go over to the SEC. Florida is uh, top of the SEC right now. They're seven and one. Georgia is six and one. Texas A&M is five and one. A lot of one-loss teams here. Even Tennessee's got a one-loss team. So it's going to be a tight race getting towards uh, the middle of this schedule. And especially since a lot of these uh, big schools, especially the SEC, they really make the push because they have the toughest schedules probably in the nation. So they make the push for the top of the rankings towards the end of the year. So. North Carolina, number one. Wow, that's just so surprising looking at the ACC here. It looks like Miami's still ranked, but they're four and three. So let's just hop into this game, man. We are going up against Oklahoma State, and they are five and one. They're no slouch, but they are five and one. So let's get into it. Let's go.
So we are at home for this matchup versus Oklahoma State. This should be a good one. And starting out the game, Albert Vic <laughs> straight air mailing one over the receiver's head that time, Kevin Oliver. So facing a third and nine, another horrible throw. Not the start you're looking for from Albert Vic, but John Waters got his back on defense with a deflection that time. So facing a third and four, Wood T is going to throw out to the flat this time, finding Brown, but Brown gets stopped before the first down marker. Corey Lurch that time in on the tackle. So now second and four back out after the punt. Kevin Oliver gets the pass across the middle uh, for the first down. So facing another second and 13, Cooley is going to get open. So two back-to-back -back slants for first downs. And here is uh, Vic one more time throwing Bruh. to the outside, but that one is going to be picked off. And he look at this. He keeps his foot inbounds and everything. And he comes up with the interception. And look at that, man. We are number two in the nation. And we got to show why we are number two. We can't be making mistakes like that anymore. But back out on defense, Woodsy is giving the ball to Brown that time. And on the play action that time, throwing it. And look at Josh Dunbar with the effort. He seems to found, have found his spot in the slot especially since you know his freshman year he had an amazing freshman season but now in the slot I mean I've had to move him there he's given up too many big plays his sophomore year but now he's doing his thing in the slot and he's been actually it's funny because like you would think this is a video game that you just slot anybody in there and they'll do well but this game proves that it actually does take time for these guys to develop into their roles because Dunbar took a while to get used to the slot position. Now he's used to it, and he's doing really, really well. So back out on offense, Albert Vic this time rolling out right. He's going to find a running lane and get in for the four-yard scramble. Albert Vic, I don't run with him often. I like to use his arm more than his legs, but this time he uses his legs, gets in for the touchdown. So now here's Woodsy back out on offense, and Brown straight gives our guy a mean stiff arm and gets up inside a field goal range. So now Woodsy gives the ball to Brown one more time, and he breaks a tackle and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Ladarren Brown. And this is going to be a 10-7 lead. I told you this was going to be a tough game. Oklahoma State is always a tough game to play because they have a lot of good athletes on their squad. But here is Alex Brown, speaking of good athletes, busting out a long gainer on that one, getting past the 40-yard line. So now facing a second and 10 onto the second quarter. Here is Albert Vic rolling out. He's going to find Alex Brown one more time for the 15-yard reception. So now facing a second and five inside the 30-yard line, finding Ben Miller. Remember, he had that huge game last game, and he gets the first down. So now second and ten, four and a half minutes left in this half, and here's Albert Vic trying to do a little too much, throwing to the back of the end zone, and that one is going to be picked off for his second interception of the game and Oklahoma State takes over with the three-point lead but they do have to drive the whole length of the field but that's going to be no problem because Woodsy finds his receiver Greenwood and Jetter just trips him up on that one and I'm, I'm looking for that pressure I don't know where the pressure's been the last few games I haven't gotten a lot of just straight pressure without sending any blitzes and it's coming back to bite us because now our cornerbacks are forced to hold their man longer. And look at Oklahoma State. They capitalize, finding the tight end that time. I'm not even going to try to say his name. He gets in for the touchdown. So now Albert Vicks got to drive down two and a half minutes left before half, put together a little two-minute drill. And here he is finding Ben Miller open on the sideline that time. Nice blocking by my offensive line. So now facing a first and 10 this time, finding our man Kevin Oliver, the slot guy for the 15-yard reception. So now a minute and a half left in this first half. And here's Albert Vic this time throwing an absolute dime. And Ben Miller using the stiff arm, plowing his way to about the one yard line. So now Alex Brown gets back in the game and he gets a handoff, finishing off the drive 
for the touchdown, and that's going to be we're going to leave about a minute left on the clock before half, and Woodsy has enough time, and here he is taking a chance on that one. Vince Cohen almost gets in for another pick. Remember, he had that pick six last game. Almost gets another pick, so here is Woodsy once again finding Greenwood. Greenwood is straight torching both sides of the defense. He dusted Jetter last time, this time John Waters. So now facing a first and 10, 20 seconds left in this gotcha, first bitch. half, and this time he's going to try to escape, but he gets sacked that time by Todd Williams. So 10 seconds left in this half. This time he's going to throw deep, but Jetter is going to be there for the interception, and that's going to be a savior of from Jetter that time and preventing the touchdown before half, and he pretty much stops all momentum from Oklahoma State going into halftime because they do start it out with the ball, but they they have this one-two punch of Greenwood and Brown on offense. They're just giving these guys the ball nonstop, and here is uh, Wood T finding his receiver that time on the out route. So now facing a third down, Brown is going to break a tackle and pick up the eight-yard gain for the first down. So now Wood T is going to throw a screen pass, and this time John Waters is going to sniff it out, and he's going to run this one all the way for the touchdown. And all these gadget plays they've been running finally comes back to haunt them. All these screens and all these short passes and finally john waters makes a play and it's it's funny because i've always been waiting for john Bruh. waters to make a play this season and that's going to be the first big play he makes but look at that cheese you see that i had the guy dead to rights there on the tackle and somehow he i don't even know the computer didn't even let me dive or anything he just runs right past him so they do settle for the field goal on that possession but here is alex brown back out on offense getting the nice 18 yard carry and now it's about two minutes left but look at this cheese ea Bruh. is cheesing me this game they put up the i don't even know what that was pretty much distracting me from finding a receiver and somehow <laughs> i mean i had to run out of bounds on that one but i do settle for the field goal at least i was in field goal range so now almost on to the fourth quarter and john waters finally starting to show up in the later parts of this season i mean we're not that too too far into the season but at least showing up these last couple games with these deflections and interceptions he's doing a pretty good job i like what i see from him now that he's kind of a veteran on this team i'm expecting him to make plays but now back out on offense albert brown Al albert vick finding ben miller that time i'm mixing up everybody's name because here's alex brown getting the carry that time getting the first down but now facing a third and 13 at about the 20 yard line this time albert vick's gonna try to throw and look at this i have two receivers Bruh. in the area and none of them come up with the ball jamel cooley isn't paying attention and that should have been a touchdown but we do settle for three points but now oklahoma state they have a chance to come down and possibly tie the game up and even take the lead but this time Red Johnson straight clocks Wood T on that one. But now facing a fourth and one, they choose to go for it. And Wilson's in this time for Brown, and he picks up the first down. So now three minutes left in this game. Wood T is going to give it to Wilson. Wilson has an open lane, but he doesn't have the speed to get to the end zone. We do stop him before this end zone for six. But now facing a third and eight, a manageable third and eight. And this time, Wood T finds his receiver on the outside and oklahoma state takes the four point lead here with two minutes left in this fourth quarter so now marquette's back on offense albert vick cannot afford to make any mistakes on this drive we have to get into the end zone down by four points and here he is keeping it on the option keeper so now it's about a minute left. Albert Vick facing another third and six. This time he's going to find Christopher Rubright. And somehow he breaks through a gang of defenders and finds his way into the end zone for a 45-yard touchdown. The unlikely guy to get the touchdown gets in and scampers for a long gain. And we take a three-point lead. But here's Oklahoma State. They have a minute 
left to drive the length of the field. And here's Woodsy. He's been hot on all these drives, and he throws to the outside. That was inc incomplete. But look at this. They go to the booth, and they review it. But somehow they say his foot's in bounds. That's clearly Bruh. out of bounds. But they overturn it. So now he's facing a third and three, throwing to the outside, finding his receiver, Wallace, on that one. So they're definitely helped out by that uh, booth review on that one. But here is Woodsy back out, running out of the pocket, finding a nice seven yards for the third down attempt. And this time he's finding Greenwood. Nice catch that time by Greenwood and time's ticking at 17 seconds left in this game and he's gonna give it off to his running back but pay attention to this sequence nine seconds left they have a timeout left they're gonna attempt to run one more play Woodsy from the pistol is gonna throw across the middle and throw to his <laughs> guy but what kind of clock management was that the clock runs out and that's gonna be a victory for the Marquette Golden Eagles. And I mean, that was just horrible. Woodsy was having such a good game up to that point, but that time he didn't do a good job of clock management and runs that last play and Marquette lucks out because that could have easily went into overtime, but we come up with the victory. And I mean, a lot of takeaways from that game. We're never safe. I mean, we just had a big win versus Houston. We come back out in this game, and it's a close one. And I got to say, I don't know what's wrong with my pass rush right now. I've been sending blitzes, doing everything I can on defense, but nobody can get to the quarterback. So that's definitely going to be have to something we can work on. But hit subscribe, hit that like button, man. We definitely have to clean that up before hopping into some of these later games in the season because going into – possibly conference championship league week i mean we have a path to get to the conference championship pretty much paid for us we're number two in the nation right now so it's looking good so stay tuned you don't want to miss any of the action coming up because we're getting to that point of the season where it's crunch time we got to buckle down tighten some loose ends and make adjustments when we should so stay tuned let's get it let's go